the United, United States, States of America, America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. being passed out and recap what happened the last meeting we had here. Uh, I suggested that area on DeWitt Avenue, which is now vacant because of the, the removal of a number of buildings and now a flat spot with some concrete on it, be seriously considered for a small pocket park. I also reviewed some history of the village that at one time on that part of DeWitt, there was an open area and was apparently a part of a part, pocket park according to your original plot of the village. That unfortunately was destroyed over time. Now with some buildings that have been removed, there is some space there, roughly I'd say two to three lots, maybe a little bit more, 
uh, maybe about two acres max, <coughs> that would be available for a pocket park. Having said that, I, someone approached me afterwards and said, there's plans for that already on D Wood. I said, you're kidding. Said, no, and they provided me with this. Um, apparently, I can't tell if it was 2008 it was developed or 2003. I suggest 2003 would probably be the correct date because some of the stuff on there is not there anymore. But it looks like it's a rather elaborate plan to develop for that spot or near to it on DeWitt. Now obviously anything developed there initially would not be this elaborate because it would be expensive. But there's some stuff that can be done along the shrubbery, uh, making sure there's a proper uh, reduction of water because uh, people who live below that do have drainage problems. As I indicated previously in my own lot, which is a little bit down for it, I had to spend about $1,500 just to put gravel down to keep the overflow since the buildings behind me were destroyed and there was no, uh, there's no uh, proper runoff control. So this, this would be a win-win situation if you develop that area and it would help the community you have POD right across the street from it. This would increase their value. Uh, it's not big enough to be developed as an R1, which is zoned now, and is too small really to put in as a PUD. It's not economically feasible, no matter what you want to do. It's, it, and if you try to put another PUD right across from the current one, I don't think that would fly too well. Just my own opinion. So I think this would be a viable option it would take it off our tax rolls. We would have to pay tax on the property. It would become public property for public use and therefore no longer taxable. And it would be a, a village asset and certainly an asset for D6 because it would be getting back something it had years ago. And we're not asking for something we didn't have before. We just want something back that we previously had. And I think that I would ask you to seriously consider it, not necessarily tonight, but over a period of time. And I'm not saying it has to be this elaborate, but you have the space there, and I think it'd be a waste of a community asset not to do something with it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else? I don't see how to do 
great. And I also <coughs> think having these um, benches along those trails would be very helpful too for those people, the older that are having trouble getting going or needing to sit every so many feet. So it's a great idea. Um, last but not least is who's in charge of the tennis courts? Anybody in charge of the tennis courts? I was thinking of trying to put together a uh, tournament type thing um, and I was just wanting to collaborate with some of the cities and so I thought I'd ask in Green Hills if there's anybody responsible for the tennis courts here. I would be. Check with you would be? Okay. All right, well then I'll just talk to you further about it. Okay, thank you very much.
name's Alexis Owen. I've lived in Green Hills virtually all my life. I am interested in the rec committee because we don't have a younger voice. It'd be nice to have activities that we're interested in mid twenties. Are you saying we're old? No, <laughs> not necessarily. Yeah. You would be right. <laughs> <laughs> but the younger generation gets good. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, reports to village officials. Uh, Municipal manager Yvonne Coco. Um, thank you, Mayor. The one thing I do want to point out tonight, and that is the item um, that came to you just this evening, although I, I had mentioned it, uh, talked with uh, Maria Walter about this, that it could happen. You know, we had the bid for our truck, and that was part of your packet, but we were waiting on a second bid for the equipment, which is being purchased separate. Um, I did get that second bid in time to get something in front of you tonight so we can get the whole thing ordered. Um, but I just wanted to explain why that was only in front of you tonight. So that time we can talk more about the you said before. All right, all director Jeff Forbes. Thank you, Mayor. Um, no reports um, except to, you know, I guess, the update on the activity at the state is that the budget bill has different versions of it have passed the house and passed the senate it's on its way to the conference committee to iron out the differences and we'll just have to wait and see how it, you know, how it comes out of that committee uh, we continue to watch that as we do all the other legislation in the state that may impact local governments but beyond that uh, nothing specific to report tonight thank you any questions Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> uh, the June 2015 community calendar and resolution numbers 2015, 2015, 2015, 16 TNS, 2015, 17 F, 18 F, and 19 SNS were posted as required. Also posted as required was a public notice of the Planning Commission public hearing of July 4, 2015 regarding proposed text amendments to the Greenville Zoning Code. And if there are no questions, that would conclude my report. Hearing no questions, uh, moving on, uh, Chief of Police. Uh, uh, no, Neil is not here. Neil is getting quite young. Corporal Johnston filling in for the chief. He's on vacation right now. Uh, first, just touch on a couple things that were brought up about the uh, speeding. I will bring that to the chief's attention and our officers. They have some more presence out there. Now, you mentioned the speed sign. We're, we are members with the uh, Hamilton County Police Association. Um, I'll have to go back and check. At one time, we did have um, a speed movable sign within that police association. So I'll have the chief follow up on that. That might be a possibility. Um, just going over the, uh, the report that the uh, chief prepared um, the department, we continue to update and review our general orders and policy. The chief and lieutenant are actively working on that with a few select officers. Um, this past month, the chief, lieutenant, and the clerk of uh, police attended a PAMET update. PAMET is the software that we use for reporting our daily activities and keeping all of our incident reports in. That was held in uh, Springfield Township. Um, we adopted some new protocols and policy within the department um, with how to respond to heroin overdoses. This was in conjunction with the Hamilton County Heroin Task Force, which is newly formed. Um, that was pretty much modeled off of a task force that they put together in the Cleveland area a few years ago. <coughs> so that's something new for us. By the numbers, just looking at some numbers, for last month, uh, the department issued 79 traffic citations. We had 28 arrests. We had 766 contacts with the public. And we took about 207 incident reports. Any questions? Very good, thank you. Thank you. for the month of May, uh, $63 went to the county, $1,869 went to the state of Ohio, and 
$9,082 to the Village of Green Hills for a grand total of $11,014. That's all I have. Committee reports, finance and audit, Mr. Brees. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, later this evening, we will be voting on um, two finance uh, items. Uh, one is the resolution accepting the 2016 tax budget. I would urge all my colleagues to vote in the affirmative for that. Uh, we've had public hearings. We've had lots of work done on it. We've had debate and discussion. Um, and then also, try to maintain organizational discipline and only talk about the things that affect finance and audit. I'm going to stray from that tonight. Um, I would encourage every parent that's listening, every young adult that's listening, every old adult that's listening, and any other person that I didn't get caught up in those three categories. Um, I, I had a discussion with the police chief a couple weeks ago. Part of the discussion was how difficult it is to be a police officer in these times and he is amazed that people want to join that profession and um, I share that amazement and my um, encouragement to anybody that gets stopped by a police officer is to uh, show respect to them to uh, comply with their requests and even if you think that they are totally in the wrong you can sort that out in court but um, Regrettably, um, our community, the greater Cincinnati area, has had an officer lose his life in the last week and has also had an incident that was on national news at a swimming pool. And um, there are an awful lot of good cops, and um, the ones that aren't will be found out through the system. And uh, it, it seems so needless and uh, that three young boys would not have their father on Father's Day because of um, somebody that needed to do something very foolish. Um, so I, I would just encourage people to do that and uh, just comply with police officers. And if you like what they're doing, thank them. And if you don't like what they're doing, file a complaint and, and get something exposed. Um, but um, to the extent that uh, we have such tragedy going on, so close to home. Uh, need, you know, we've had officers lose their lives in New Orleans and in other places recently, and it's, it's just a terrible tragedy for our, for our country, in my opinion. So um, I'll, I'll stick back to my discipline of uh, talking about finance and all that. So fine. I'm done. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. That would be great. Matt was our finance director. 
for the viewing audience. Matt Sanders, that was Matt Sanders. <laughs> Any other questions for me? Actually, uh, to uh, Diana's question um, concerning the budget and that uh, uniform line item of $2,700, is, is there any way we can have some feedback on? I, I don't want to change the budget tonight for one line <coughs> item. Um, we have a balance, you know, we've we worked through this budget. There may be things that we don't understand that I would defer to the manager on. And remember, this is just a blueprint for spending. None of this money can be spent till we appropriate it. So um, I've got a note to follow up with the manager on that. And uh, we will. Yeah, I, I don't want you to think your comment was ignored. Uh, but if, if we think we can do it for 700, then when we come times for appropriation, it'll be 2,000 lighter than what's in the budget. And we'll be well, you know, and I, I think the budget should align as much as possible. I don't think we should be making our decisions at the appropriation level. I think the budget should reflect, and if there's something that's inconsistent, we should. I, I'm not, I, I don't know all the details of, of what other committees are doing, or, or other communities are doing, um, and for, for one item on there. And there is a deadline for when this has, the budget has to be. That's fine, right. I, I mean, the whole purpose is to, to yes. make sure yes. that people are heard and um, and then if there's obviously there's a lot that goes into some of these figures uh, sometimes it's not as clean and dry but I think we owe it to the people out there to have an answer and what uh, and I'll give you some background on the question that she brought up um, that amount of money was offered to the employees in the pit and actually they have increased a little bit initially probably 20 25 years ago the village rented uniforms for the service department. And so that was the cost 25 years ago for the village, which was the savings for us by, actually we were probably paying more at that time uh, for uniforms. And so sure. we asked the employees to, to, to provide the other thing. And the village had, done, had been providing uniforms for years. And if I could just tack on to that, it, it, this is not a new thing. Uh, what happened in, uh, was it 2012 or 2013 when we did the handbook, this was always in the code and, and it didn't get increased at that time. It, for whatever reason, didn't make it into the book and we are putting it in the book now. So it's, this isn't something new that we're going right. to start doing. I'm not opposed to looking at something and say, is this expense worth continuing to do? And so we'll look at it. Well, that's fine. I just want to make sure it's addressed. Yeah. I yeah. agree with you, uh, Jeff. I, I thought at a moment when I saw that perhaps with the police uniforms or something, but that's what I did write um, uh, item on the uh, handbook, and uh, I would like to have a second look at that. I, I agree with you on that. And, and just another point, it gets a little bit um, difficult because there's a lot of aspects to an employee and sometimes wait, raises aren't given and I'm not saying this is how business should be done but sometimes there's other factors one it was grandfathered in because this is how it was done before with running um, doesn't hurt to look at it um, I think I think it's good to discuss it so thank you I will add that when you talk to employees and you want to take something away from them then we best consider having that so if you right. eliminated the uniform allowance, that would give to the favor. So, right, yeah. right. So I think it just has to fall in the legitimate category. And, and, yeah. and if it makes sense, we need to do it. <coughs> if you want to keep happy employees, you know, start buying screw them. around with your employees. Yeah, we yeah. could always start buying them again. Right. Well, the okay. okay. question is whether that's typical practice. Okay. Okay, uh, recreation, cable TV, Mr. Hermes. I have no report this time, but I will have something in your business. Okay. Uh, Intergovernmental Affairs, Laws and Rules, Mr. Lee. Uh, actually, actually, Mr. Mayor, I'm, I'm in the same boat as uh, Mr. Hermes about meeting at the Kansas District of Warren. Uh, uh, we had some uh, problems, but uh, we intend to reschedule here very shortly. Okay. Uh, service and Streets. Uh, Member I have a meeting coming up on the 29th at 9 in the morning. I have a, an appropriate time. I have um, the ordinance um, in for the truck, and I will explain that later as well. Um, 
and um, I asked for a few questions to follow up on what is going on. The phase two um, punch list items are still being addressed. Um, the maintenance building issue is not going to be a quick fix. The vendors have looked at it, but a resolution is still in discussion. Um, the uh, truck has been identified when it was in spots. First, we, we identified since we started this process since uh, the beginning of the year. Now we have everything together, the equipment and the truck. So I will explain that later. Um, the garages, the council will be voting on the Tuesday legislation, adding some code of the language that may help us with some of the situations um, that some of the neighbors have been bringing up. Um, I also brought up the question of the, um, the garbage, and also as of today, as I was coming here in the A section, there's, there's some that's out there as well uncovered. So that seems to be a, a continuous um, problem that we have. Um, and um, I would like to um, also share with you um, that I was given the honor of Academic A Plus All Star Award um, in May, and that was a lot of fun. Uh, we have one breakout game, but um, the other one materialized, so that was uh, that was a lot of fun. Um, I attended the Board of Education meeting on 6/8, um, and um, I want to also let you know that on 6/29, the Hamilton County Municipal League will be meeting. The meeting will be in St. Bernard, and I want to remind you also that we always now have a lobbyist at all times coming to the meeting. Um, I also attended the uh, meeting for the uh, Board of Education yesterday, and I invited the Mr. Mayor there, um, and I addressed that, um, that board and the other conditions there. Um, also, there is a committee being formed that is for academic boosters, and um, there was the beginnings of that meeting on Saturday, and uh, there was a uh, presentation at the board meeting yesterday on that. So if anybody would like to know something more about it, uh, would like to ask any questions or when the meetings are, uh, please you can contact me. Um, at this time, I have finished my report, and like I said, at the appropriate time, I will bring legislation to an end here. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Questions? Uh, community development, Mr. Hall. Yes, um, since we had to cancel our meeting yesterday, we will be rescheduling for Tuesday, June 30th at 10 a.m. Uh, so we'll try to get the word out um, so that people didn't show up yesterday. Or that, uh, it was 7 o'clock yesterday evening, but uh, we're trying to get it scheduled for, uh, scheduled for Tuesday. just as technology improves, it just becomes a 
easier access, but if we have a option to go in with someone or to borrow one that they can use, that'd be great. So it's a, it's a good tool to have the data and to be able to move it and target specific areas. So I, I think that's a good suggestion. Um, I'll follow up in the traffic and safety meeting, which is um, gonna be Monday, July 20th at 4.30 is our next one. I know um, I did send the question about the National Night Out to Yvonne and the Chief when I received it. Um, and there was some talk back and forth and I hadn't had a chance to touch base um, with the Chief in person. Uh, I know on that date, um, staffing levels would not permit. There was some concerns about organizing something who would organize it. And then, um, since it's sometimes hard for us to get volunteers and uh, people to come. There was some talk about uh, if it would be viable. I know surrounding communities have dropped back from doing it the past couple of years. I know Forest Park hasn't done it lately either. So um, there was just talk more about mentioning it on our website that it's just as a FYI and not as something, a physical activity. True, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah, just to comment on that, in years past, that was um, organized by Forest Park Police Department, and um, we would participate in that along with surrounding departments like Springdale, Springfield Township. Um, but I think that stopped about probably about two or three years ago, years ago yeah. for staffing and, and finance reasons. I was wondering if, if there's any uh, uh, truth to the, to the fact that the increased traffic that the Is anything to do with the construction on North End Boulevard, also the closure of Camp, Camper? Uh, people seem to be cutting through, cutting through, and make, making some what they think are shortcuts. But I have noticed that uh, most often when we call the police department for them on road, it's uh, during the summertime. And one of the nights that I did call, it was very, very late at night. It was very, very dark. The, uh, there were children in bicycles with no lights on them, and the cars were speeding. It was a, a, not a good combination. Um, so I figured that that would be one of the things that with the uh, knowledge, at least some people would realize that they're speeding if they're not uh, have received a ticket yet telling them that they have been speeding. Uh, but I think that would be a very good idea. Uh, if, what is your knowledge, if any, the price range of that? We haven't bought one for several years because we, when we did, we bought a couple. And one of the, um, and you can use a handheld computer to link into them. And even when they're not showing the speed now, it's also collecting data. So even if the numbers aren't flashing, it's still collecting the data of how fast people are going, which is also a good tool. Um, we had some certain stretches that people took it as a challenge to see how fast they could get it to read. So um, we opted to turn the lights off so to collect the data and not have them have the option of besting their friends. So. And that way they could read it and uh, I know what the problem is or it, and there. It's the same thing as having a police car sitting right. there. People that see it modify their behavior. Right. So it's not correct, um, collecting true data, it's collecting data with a presence. So it's unfortunately, when there's a police car sitting there, people are less likely to speed or run a stop sign. So when the sign's there, they're less likely to speed unless you know they're doing it to see how fast they can go. Um, so it's a deterrent, but once it goes away, sometimes there's a short curve where it's not happening, but then we looked at that a number of years ago. It was way, way too expensive for us to afford to buy one. I don't remember what the prices were, but you know, now they've got more flexibility and with the uh, power. Because you, know, you can get them that you can attach. It doesn't have to be mobile. You can attach it to a sign yeah. or a tree or something. Yeah, the like ones that. we got were about this big and could be attached to already existing signs as opposed to a big trailer that takes up a parking spot. Maybe somebody would like to donate one. Um, okay. Um, I'll do it. 
next vote. Mr. Reeves. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Resolution 2015-20F, resolution accepting Green Hills 2016 tax budget be resolved by the village of, by the Council of the Village of Green Hills, Ohio, Section 1, that the Council of the Village of Green Hills accepts the 2016 tax budget as prepared by the municipal manager and the finance director attached here to and incorporated herein by reference. Section 2, this resolution shall be in full force and take effect on passage. I move for the adoption of the resolution. Second. Any uh, discussion, questions? Well, just the one clarification. It's not like it needed to be down. What was the date that it needs to be down? Is it due by July 15th? Just one other comment. At this time, trash collection is in the budget, but that is under consideration by the finance group. And we will also discuss the uniform. Yes. Okay. Clerk, call the roll. Halter? Aye. Hermes? Aye. Lee? Aye. Walter? Aye. Roll call? Aye. Reese? Aye. Resolution number 2015-20-F, resolution accepting Green Hills 2016, tax budget passes. You got a big one, brother. Yeah, okay. We went small font to keep going one day. <laughs> resolution 2015-21-F, resolution declaring necessary to levy a tax in excess of the 10 mil limitation uh, for recreation. Councilor Reese. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This resolution declaring it necessary to levy a tax in excess of the 10 mil limitation for recreation, whereas the village council desires to continue to provide residents of Green Hills with necessary governmental services, and whereas in order to continue to provide recreational services to the residents of the community, the village council has determined that it is necessary to renew the current recreation levy of the village as authorized by Ohio Revised Code 570.
roll. Hermes. Aye. Lee. Aye. Walter. Aye. Brokaw. Aye. Three. Aye. Walter. Aye. Resolution 2015-21-F, declaring it necessary to levy a tax in excess of the 10 mil limitation. This is a recreation levy, it passes. Great. Next issue, resolution number 2015-22-SNS, authorizing the municipal manager to purchase 2015 F550 truck cab and chassis through the state cooperative purchasing. Uh, this resolution um, is in two parts. We have a second part coming as well for the equipment for such truck. Um, so resolution number 2015-22-SNS authorizing the municipal manager to purchase a 2015 F550 truck cab and chassis through the state cooperative purchasing program. Whereas the service department is in need of a truck and whereas the village has been able to locate a truck that will meet the needs of the service department through the Ohio State Cooperative Purchasing Program. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the Village of Green Hills, Ohio, Section 1, that the municipal manager is hereby authorized and directed on behalf of the Village of Green Hills to purchase a truck for the Green Hills Service Department from Lebanon Ford, the amount of approximately $44,877. Section two, that the finance director is hereby authorized to pay said vendor an amount up to $44,877 for this vehicle. Section three, that this resolution shall take effect at the earliest day permitted by law. And I move for us to um, vote of this resolution to adopt the resolution. Second. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Um, the commentary that I wanted to, to make was that we have been looking for this since the beginning of the year and um, I made a few phone calls and I got the assurance that this will be paid in full. We are not making any arrangements. There will not additional interest to EV and uh, uh, gain by their village whatsoever would be paid totally. And I'm moving my head and saying yes, and that's our finance director there. <coughs> He's concurring with that. You went there. <laughs> okay, they're called the roll. Lee. Aye. Walter. Aye. Brokaw? Aye. Reeves? Aye. Walter? Aye. Hermes? Aye. Resolution 2015-22-SNS authorizing municipal manager to purchase a 2015 F550 truck cab and chassis through the state department <coughs> purchasing program carries. I have the resolution number 2015-23 SNS and this is for the equipment of such truck. And just arrived today, it was sent in like sometime this afternoon because we didn't have it in the packets, et cetera. So I'm there for you to please uh, go along with this because this is a much needed uh, equipment for such truck. Authorizing the municipal manager to purchase equipment for this 2015 F550 truck cabin chassis whereas the equipment is needed for the cab and chassis to be purchased by the village, and whereas the cost of the equipment is under the bidding threshold. However, the village solicited bids from two vendors and has selected the lowest bid. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the Village of Green Hills, Ohio, Section 1, that the municipal manager is hereby authorized and directed on behalf of the Village of Green Hills to purchase equipment to include a dump body package and a snow plow package and other miscellaneous equipment needed for the 2015 F550 in the amount of approximately $27,575.00 from Kaffenbarger Truck Equipment Company. Section 3. 
section two, that the finance director is hereby authorized to pay said vendor an amount up to $27,575.00 for this equipment. Section three, that this resolution shall take effect at the earliest date permitted by law. And I move to adopt this resolution. Second. I move to second uh, to adopt the resolution. Any discussion? No. Did we get a, I, I know we solicited two bids. Did we get a second bid from a, a second vendor? Yes, we did. And who was it and what was the bid? It was, um, Thank <laughs> you. 